start with Irwin and Spot Valley. It's one team playing for pride, the other for a spot in the second round. 24 hours ago, Irwin's chance of a second round berth seemed merely mathematical. But William Nibbs' defeat to Holland has opened the door in a big way. And a big win today could go a long way towards being able to help them to the last 16. Here's a man in the middle, O.J. Doheny, the first assistant, Linton Smith, the second assistant, and Sean Wright, the fourth official. Well, Irwin starts with Jaquan Kenton in goal, a back four of central defenders C.J. Johnson and Neil White. Kenoa Morant at left back and Jay Walters at right back. Tevin Leslie, their leading scorer, along with Abraham Quest and Ronaldo Hilton, will be in midfield with the front three. Winners Leah Campbell and Amara Robinson. Demaria Russell set as the main striker. They are coached by Norman Foster. The Spot Valley team will actually have Joseph McFarlane in goal. They've made a late change. They have a back four, Kevon Perry, Jacine Bright, Shamar Lewis and Nevaldo Christie. Uh, Nathaniel Wilson, Khalid Stevenson, Anthony Francis in the middle of the park. Kemar Stanford, uh, Keanta Clark, Malik Stewart uh, will be up front for the Spot Valley boys. And uh, we get the contest underway. And uh, this one very important for... Irwin High School and uh, they know that not only do they need to win Chris Taylor but they also need to score as many goals as possible because as it is now uh, they are significantly behind William Nib as far as goal difference is concerned and they would want to improve that area as well along with the three points going into their final game against William Nib. Yeah they're currently lying in fourth position with the nine points, a goal difference of five. William made 15 points, a goal difference of 13. So quite a disparity. And the coaching staff did speak of that from an Irwin perspective. Spot Valley, no chance of going through. They line seventh with just four points. But as we saw yesterday, the motivation is certainly there. We saw it from Holland, who had no chance of going through either, but certainly took it to William Nip and came away with the three points, that one nil victory. Yeah, that was certainly a shock result. Irwin's best result came in 2016. A third place finish in the zone. Never been out of the zone, Irwin High. The spot volley coming forward. And that will have a free kick. There's the incident. Interesting right take down. But you made that color fuchsia. It's very close to the, the, the boards, the digital boards in the background. In terms of color. And what color would you say Irwin is wearing? There's Norman Foster, their head coach. White and purple. <laughs> or lavender. There you go. Norman Bigger Foster. Played at the Premier League level for many years. Free kick coming up for Spot Valley. Oh, that took a deflection and hit the crossbar. been a super start for them. Shamar Lewis with the free kick actually fell the head of a Spot Valley player. Kevon Perry with the header hitting the crossbar. Great start this for Spot Valley. Spoke about coming out here with an attacking intent. And uh, we are seeing that early.
salesman. The head coach of the Spot Valley team, his brother Ricardo Salesman, his assistant. Not the most fluid start to this game. Had a delay. Had a ground delay. Now a player delay. <laughs> but yeah, Spot Valley certainly have started on the front foot. They've only scored four goals so far this season, Spot Valley. Certainly came very close. As I said, the likes of Kevon Perry, the number 16, they say. He had a glance in the top of the crossbar. He'll be looking to get on the end of this as well. Has some height to him, the number 16. Has got a free kick on this occasion. Opportunity for Irving to clear, which they do. Now they can attack. Stevenson down again. Did have an awkward fall a few moments ago into a big puddle of water. <laughs> was completely soaked. Spot valley number eight. Could be a happy afternoon for him. Bright start for Spot Valley. It's a shot towards Cole. Oh, fortunate. Cuts off the left up right. Might have been just seen right with the left footed effort. Spot Valley close again. And it was actually Perry who got the shot off. Kevon Perry. He had hit two of the three areas of the frame so far. He hit the crossbar a few moments ago. Now the left upright. Mm. Coming close, Perry. Great movement to create that space and the left foot to strike just a couple inches off. And Ricardo Salesman did say that they wanted to get an early goal and put Irwin under pressure. Irwin a little weaker. There's a shot! Oh, brilliantly saved! By McFarlane! And now Spock Valley! At the other end. Perfectly cleaned up. Yeah. Erwin do have a noticeable absentee at the back. 
couple of cream with both because of a red card. Usually players in the center back role for them. And that probably would be making things a little bit easier for Spot Valley as well because that cohesion in the central roles of the defense not quite there. And it would take some while, some time for them to sort that out in terms of the communication. So opportunities there for Spot Valley early in the game. It's a big miss coming up. Lefty looking to split the defense open there. Too much weight on the pass. But a lively first 10 minutes to this Zone A, the Costa Cup encounter. Certainly the penultimate game of the season for Spot Valley. Irwin, if they can win this. And the next. And there's still a chance of them getting through to the second round, which is the quarterfinal round, which you could also classify as the round of 16. like a world-class effort was about to come from it. Then it didn't. Spot Valley. The captain trying to get into space, but the ball doesn't get to him. Kevon Perry. The Spot Valley number 16 has already hit the crossbar. And the left upright. It's always looking dangerous when they head forward. He's one of two. He's one of two scorers for Spot Valley as well. Two goals to his name, Kevon Perry. The other goal scorer out injured. A big deal. O'Neill Rowe. He's their other two goal scorer missing their number seven. Spot Valley had a very good year in 2016, where they actually made it through to the quarterfinal round. Oh, here's the ball kipping away almost. Good recovery. It's an excellent year for them. They actually beat Clarendon College in the quarterfinal round by two goals to one. At the juicy field in Clarendon. Ended up coming third in that zone behind Clarendon College and Little London. Really impressive year for them. That's the best they have shown in their schoolboy time. <laughs> Just see how the ball is. Not moving freely at all, especially towards this western end. When it comes into the 18-yard box, it almost stops rolling. Thought that would have been a major concern from the officials, but pushing through will be difficult to defend that area as well, and especially for the goalkeepers. Actually, as we mentioned earlier, 
2016 actually. The best year for both these teams as Irwin finished third place in the zone in 2016. And actually the winner came from their zone in Cornwall College. They were third behind Cornwall and St. James. We see a blocked attempt. And Demoria Russell, the 15-year-old with a shot on that occasion, has scored once this season, Russell. Likely to be a muddy afternoon for these players. Can I mourn with a throw? Headed on by Leslie. Free kick for Spot Vanny. Nevada Christie going down. Very experienced player, Nevada Christie. In his uh, fourth season of playing in the Dacosta Cup, actually started as a goalkeeper at the under 14 level for Spot Valley. As a transition into a defender, protecting goals. Here's Leslie. Thought about the shot. Decides to pass. Now the shot. Tried by Leslie. Here you see picking it up, picking it up on the right hand side. That's a strike into the far corner. Solid hit with the instep. Amara Robinson with the goal. His third goal of the season. Leslie with the assist. Tremendous finish that. And just the start that Irwin would have wanted. for Irwin this season that very level coming off three victories in a row including two three goal efforts really doing well against of course St. James and Malden respectively two three nil results and of course a three two victory over Holland as well brilliant save at the other end might have been going wide but Jaquan Kenton Taking no chances. No, definitely wasn't going wide. On target. Powering it away for a corner kick. And they won't get another corner kick. Confirmation of the goal from Amaro Robinson, his third of the campaign. And he will want a few more in the afternoon because Irwin can use as many of them as possible as they hunt a place in the next round. Pair with the corner kick. Stevenson was dispossessed. Spot Valley get it back. Now Clark loses possession. Here is Leslie. Well, Leslie sends a lovely looking ball forward, but at the end of the day, just a little bit too much weight on it. And uh, Joseph McFarlane was right there to receive. 
18 years old, the spot Valley goalkeeper Joseph McFarlane in his fourth season. He prides himself, Chris, on being able to play, he says, every single position on the field. He wasn't originally down to starting goal for them today. No, you're supposed to be playing in the middle of the park. Regular number 22, Joseph McFarlane, but certainly the coaching staff think of him as a utility player. They say the squad is blessed with quite a few goalkeepers and goalkeepers who can play outfield positions as well. And according to Joseph McFarlane, he can play every single one of them. Navaldo Christie, the number six, another player who is an experienced goalkeeper who's playing in the center back role this afternoon. Joseph McFarlane already beaten once this afternoon. Siobhan Lewis unable to see Tannen play. It's a good little player there, Erwin number seven. There he is, Calvin Le Leslie. Initially, I thought it was actually him who had struck the ball into the far corner. Then realizing after that it was Robinson. It was Leslie with the assist, though. He scored four so far this season as well, Leslie. Leading goal scorer for the Erwin team. Might get a few opportunities today. Erwin dominating possession at this stage. They come forward again. The ball just stopping in the puddle. The goalkeeper getting a soaking as well. Always knew that would be a problematic area of the park. Always looks dangerous when he's on the football and he's been given a lot of room to operate in the middle of the park. Here he is again. Two waiting inside the box. Attempted shot from Leslie did not come off. Free kick spot Valley. Chamar Lewis. Taken out by Morant. They'll take the opportunity to go to the first water break of the contest as we have a look at this cross. With Nevaldo Christie getting the header away. Erwin having the advantage. Although it was Spot Valley who got out of the blocks quicker and had a couple of early opportunities. Perry hitting the crossbar and the left upright before Erwin took their opportunity and made it 1-0. And what a good strike it was from that man. Amaro Robinson. Three 
and the season for him to go with one assist and it was certainly a lovely instep drive with the right foot into the far corner here it is just have a look at this for quality yeah it was Leslie who picked the ball up here this contemplated a shot decided against it oh that's a brilliant finish kept his head down kept his body weight over the ball momentum into the kick great strike certainly no chance for the likes of McFarlane in between the sticks like I said like to play everywhere McFarlane but there's no way no matter which position he was playing he was going to get to that had a lot of room to work with Amara Robinson never really closed down McFarlane. They do have a reserve keeper in Ronique White, who still opted to go with McFarlane, who was originally slated to play in the midfield. And strength of keepers for the Swat Valley team. Now, of course, Ronique White is only 15 years old and has never played competitive football before being part of the Swat Valley unit, so that might have been quite a baptism for him. Based on the area down there, it's very likely to have a baptism. The attempted cross coming from Natalie Wilson. Behind for a goal kick. Sorry, Chris, I picked that up a little bit late. opportunities for, for Spot Valley Curses. The game has been dominated by Irwin. Yeah, no surprise there. Haven't even gotten any opportunities within the near the area at all. Spot Valley, they've been pushed back. Of course, the goal as well would have given extra confidence to this Irwin team. Who scored 11 goals this season, not shy in front of goal. Three victories, all three of them in a row. 3 2 over Holland, and then 3 0 wins over Malden and St. James High. That last one, especially, must have been a, a big win for them over St. James High, a pedigree team who lifted the Cutter Cup in 2008. We will see them later this afternoon as well. That was a big statement from Irwin. I remember seeing them in the opening game of the 2019 season against Cornwall College. They actually led Cornwall College and uh, Cornwall found a way to come back and win that by two goals to one at the Montego Bay Sports Complex. And uh, you would have been thinking that they would have, in, in many ways, built from that 2019 campaign. Well, of course, we know what happens. And as you said, loss of players, I mean, it is school, so players of a certain age will matriculate to the tertiary level and beyond, and I'm just not able to be a part of the program. A regular fourth place finishers in the zone, Erwin. As I just said, a third place finish is the best they have ever done. Yeah, I'll bring around that third and, and fourth at this stage, but... They can be so much better if they can find a way to win the final two matches. This one against Spot Valley. And they have William Nip to come as well. Free kick coming up. Actually, Walters committing the infringement on Nathaniel. Sorry, on Kevon Perry. Just looking at the standings, so a really hard task to even displace William Nib. Let us say they were to win this, but differential right now in terms of goal difference lies at seven. 
with this one nil lead. So this match would really have to be a what we'd call a jump up scenario. Now they have to score a few goals here today. Correct. And then it's quite improbable to have a huge beating on William Nip. Yeah. If any at all. Corner kick coming in from Wilson, headed away. And of course, Colo College, with one game to come, they have Malden. It's highly unlikely that they will lose to Malden, a team to this point that has not scored a goal in the competition and does not have a point in the competition. Yeah, highly unlikely. I think that's why they, the men of red and gold are smiling, thinking that they've done the hard they have done the hard work now. They've struggled so much in this zone. And that one nil victory yesterday against Herbert Morrison, a big deal. They have massive victory. And even though it, it doesn't, it wasn't the actual decider, it certainly felt that way. As I said, with them having Maldon to come, probably the easiest match of the final round. Although, Ricardo, your alma mater might have been saying that a few weeks ago and it didn't turn out that way. It's Irwin versus Buck Valley. We've gone by 30 minutes in this encounter. Irwin leading by a goal to nil. It's a good ball coming in. The goalkeeper didn't claim initially, but does well to recover Joseph McFarlane. You like to think of yourself as a cricketer as well. Was that a, a nice leave alone outside the Arsenal? So results coming through in the Manning Cup yesterday, Chris. Calabar meeting St. George's College by seven goals to one. Yeah, big result for them. Can't necessarily make up for six last points, but certainly a, a, a big result nevertheless. It keeps the group a bit interesting, adds something to their goal difference. And they will need some favours from some other teams in that zone as well if they are to get through Calabar. Irwin still having their fate in their own hands. They need to score as many goals as possible here today against Pop Valley. And then find a way to beat William Nib in their final encounter. You don't get the feeling it will be too easy to beat this Pop Valley team. Much less score many goals on them. Spot Valley coming off a 2 0 loss to Cornwall College. And before that, a 5 1 thrashing at the hands of Herbert Morrison. There's the coaching staff, the salesman crew, as well as Rowan Bernard, the assistant coach, and Herman Russell, also a part of that unit, the manager. Erwin attacking dangerously again. It's another cross. Jim, the goalkeeper, fumbles but recovers quickly. A game that has been completely taken over by Irwin now. Oh, that's delightful. And it wins a corner kick. He's liking it too. Javaria Russell, the 15 year old. In fact, was Leo Campbell, the number 10. A couple of goals and a couple of assists to his credit this season. Campbell, here's another good cross coming in. And the shot is wide of the mark. And that should have been finished by the captain, C.J. Johnson. Centre back, not known for his goal scoring prowess. Excellent ball put in the box and just needed a cushioned right foot. 
here it is a little below the ball needed to get on top of it to have proper control unfortunately for him it wasn't so free kick one by Kevin Leslie man who provided the assist for the opening goal in the afternoon here at William Neff with the free kick what off the mark Is struggling to maintain possession and Irwin away with the football again. More trouble on the horizon for Scott Valley. There's another very good cross coming in. And it's served up on a platter for goalkeeper McFarlane. Very good delivery into the box. And again, a very average finish, unfortunately, for the Irwin team who really need to take their chances. As we mentioned, the importance of goal difference in this zone and two or three really good opportunities to extend their lead speaking of leads results coming in from the manning cup clan carthy lead papine by a goal to nil jonathan grant lead tivoli by a goal to nil as well Tivoli missing a penalty and an opportunity to level that game. In the Dakota Cup, big match. In one of the others, it was Monroe 1, Lacovia 1. Monroe currently lie on top of that table. Lacovia in fourth position, but still an opportunity to make things interesting. Rossi's won. 11 time champions Rossi's. Green Island won. Approaching half time in that match. Zone B encounter. We would have been a lot closer to half time if not for the delay. Stephenson for Spot Valley. Lewis. And Stephenson unable to keep it in play. They really have not had much of the possession. Spot Valley.
to win the throw for Erwin. Now the team seems to want the ball. The pace of the game has slowed down quite a bit in both teams. Ready for the halftime break. As I said, apart from those first five minutes where Spot Valley really had Irwin on the defensive, hitting the frame twice. Kevon Perry, it's been mostly Irwin in there, White and Lavender have been attacking and really taking the charge to the Spot Valley team, but they haven't taken enough of their chances if they really want to increase their chances of qualifying from this zone A. Eight zones into the Costa Cup this season. The top two from each zone to go through to a quarter-final round. It will be four zones of four. Sixteen teams, four zones of four. The top in each of those zones will go through to a semi-final playoff. And then, of course, the winners to contest the final. Long way away from those semi-finals and final. Those to come in January. Staff looking on as Norman Bigger Foster. Seen it all before, veteran. Erwin stepping forward. Leslie just couldn't keep it under his control. Would have had an opportunity to shoot at goal. Ladies Club football in the parish of St. James. Bigger Foster. At a time at, at Ballet kickers when they're around played for Seba United as well. Finished his career at Seba United in terms of Premier League football. If memory serves me correct, correct, he actually played till about the age of 40 
in the Premier League. Norman Foster. Likes to talk about his carpentry as well. Very skilled carpenter. Very much so. Erwin Walters. That left a lot to be desired. Not a surprise this season, Ricardo. Players going down because of cramp and muscle issues. Not really the ex extended champs that would have liked to see generally because of COVID protocols and the challenges with it. And so players have been getting fitter as the season has gone on, but it has certainly taken its toll as well. A lot of teams are able to put the different nutrition plans into practice. We do know how important that is as well. Lorraine Salesman. He and his brother are taking charge of this Spot Valley team for a while. They currently line seventh position. Spot Valley just four points from five games. A lone victory against Malden. Two minutes added at the end of this first stop. Stevenson for Spot Valley. Clark. Lewis. But it will be a goal kick. Definitely one of the best players on the park. Definitely not one of the best areas on the park. We'll have a few minutes to see if it dries up because that's half time. Spot Valley started quickly like they wanted to. Got a couple of opportunities. Hit the crossbar and the left upright. And it was Amara Robinson who then put Irwin in front on 17 minutes. And they have held that lead to the half-time break. At the end of the first answer, Irwin leads Spot Valley by a goal to nil.
hitting here. This one, the left footed strike. Hitting the left upright and falling neatly for goalkeeper Jaquan Kenton. And Irwin survived those early scares. Then it was all Irwin going forward. They put Bokali on the tremendous pressure. This one, well saved by a goalkeeper Joseph McFarlane. But in the 16th minute, he could do nothing with this one. The pass from Tallinn Leslie. And the shot, superb. Absolutely superb from the boot of Amara Robinson. His third goal of the season. Putting Erwin High in front by a goal to nil. Immediately after pulling another save out of Jaquan Kenton. But for the most part, it was Irwin on the offensive. CJ Johnson should have done a lot better with that. Just didn't get over the ball. Probably tried to hit it too hard as well. And that was another very good cross coming in. And that was comfortably served up for a goalkeeper on Fonin. So 1-0 to Irwin at the end of the first of 45 minutes as we have a look at the first half statistics. Six shots for Irwin, two on target, two for Spot Valley, one on target, no cards in the contest yet. 14 fouls overall, nine of them committed by Irwin, five by Spot Valley. Irwin dominating possession with 58% to 42 uh, for Spot Valley. Fuchsia Chris, Erwin in lavender and white, approximately. <laughs> Sounds about right. Erwin uh, trying to go forward. Uh, they know that they need goals. Demario Russell has been substituted, replaced by Ross Roy Ramsey for Erwin. Uh, Spot Valley, Jamar Stanford is off. Antoine Ormsby is on. Looking for goals, Erwin Ramsey has scored already this season. Two assists as well. That's nothing, but he'll be wearing the number 15, Roxroy Ramsey, for this Erwin team. There he is. And coaching staff will be hoping that he can add some more to his tally. And to Erwin's, they've wasted quite a few opportunities in that first half, even though they have got the goal. And as we said earlier, in this zone A, very tight battle for the first four positions. And still an opportunity to go through, but it will come down to goal difference. Irwin will be very much aware of the situation they find themselves in and the need for more goals. Of course, they started this contest with a plus five goal difference compared to William Nib, a plus 13. So if this game ended 1-0, they would have to beat William Nib by about seven or eight goals to advance ahead of them. Well, the goal difference would be seven. And of course, that would probably mean that they would have to win by four clear goals. Because, of course, William Nibbs' goal difference would deteriorate if Irwin were to beat them. A few more goals here would help Irwin. Four clear goals based on all of what we've seen so far this season would be highly unlikely against William Nib, but it's still a possibility. Cornwall College, Herbert Morrison still very much 
in the mix. Conwell are second with 13 points. Herbert third with 12. So Herbert Morrison could also end on 15 if they win their final match. Connor College themselves only have one more match remaining. Yeah, so you could actually have three teams ending on 15 and Cornwall likely to end on 16. Yeah, especially considering they're playing more than. Yeah, you don't expect them to lose that encounter as we have a look at the tackle on the play. Yeah, she actually ended up going out for a corner. What might go against Cornwall Cottage looking at that scenario now is their goal difference is only 5. So William Nib 13 is their goal difference, Con Cornwall Cottage 5, Herbert Morrison 7. But the great thing for Cornwall Cottage, they just need to win to advance. They yeah, win, man. they go to 16, 16 points, points, they are yeah. sure. Of course, if William Nib, they only need a point to guarantee their spot in the next round as well. A lot of the pressure on... Irwin. And I guess Herbert Morrison to a, a, a lesser extent because they have to win as well. But they also have to hope results go in their favor. But it's a, a real tight finish to this group. As a spot finally looks to come forward. Stevenson comes inside. And that just at the moment he was about to fire towards goal, it was taken off him. Leslie now comes forward. Opportunity for the goal scorer that spans high. Actually, it was Leo Chapel. Looking for his third goal of the campaign, Leo Chapel. Couldn't keep it down. Another wasted opportunity for Irwin. Getting in the box showed great skill the end of the first half and that was nowhere close dangerous ball this was a challenge before which resulted in a slight injury for Kelly Stevenson still down He's certainly gone through the war so far Stevenson he was a player in the first half who fell into that big puddle to the left hand side of the field and then had a hard tackle. As we see Lauren Sales Monday, head coach of Spot Valley. A team who that had their best showing in 2016 where they made it to the quarterfinals, actually defeating Clarendon College in that quarterfinal round by two goals games to two goals to one at the Juicy Park field in Clarendon. But ended up finishing third in that zone behind Clarendon and Little London and failed to advance to the semi finals. That was 2016. Haven't been able to replicate that form since Spot Valley. Tough day at the park for Khaled Stevenson. Another chance for 2 0. The flag is up offside. With the afternoon here at the William Nib Memorial High School in the parish of Trelawney.
Spanish Chris has produced so many great champions in track and field. Freaking. They've taken it quickly. And Ramsey is on his way to the top this year. Chips it in the ball. So brilliant save. Lovely cross by Roxroy Ramsey. Danger still not averted. The header is wide. This time. From the head of Ramsey himself. This was the opportunity. Nice ball from Ramsey. Spread very well. It was Leslie with the header. In the central position. Tavon Leslie who scored. Tavon Leslie who scored four times this season already. And needed to go left or right of the keeper. It was a good reaction save from McFarlane, but it actually was straight at him for the most part, but did show good reflexes. And Ramsey has looked like a live wire since coming on. Then was on the receiving end, a nice ball put into the box. Got his head on it, but unable to steer it on target again. Opportunities missed for Irwin. Could come back to haunt them as this zone progresses. This has to be the match that they look to do some damage in terms of the scoreline because it will be a much harder task against William Nib. And they won't even be favourites to win that match against William Nib. Here's Ramsey again. We've seen so many stoppages in this entire match. They have to be careful as well that Botvani don't make them pay. They don't put their chances away. Ramsey again. Update coming in, in zone B. Rossiz, the 11 time champions, now lead Green Island but by two goals to one. Ramsey again. And that wasn't as clinical from Robinson with the right boot on this occasion. High over the bar. News also coming in that the seas have been reduced to, to 10 men. So leading 2 1. But a man down against Green Island. That's actually a bottom of the table clash in zone B. It's not very often you see that about, about the seas. It was a real pedigree school in the rural area. Tapping Leslie trying his luck from distance. Well wide of the mark as we approach the hour mark in this encounter. Spot Valley. With Justine Wright. Stevenson. And now, Erwin can counter. And we'll have a great opportunity to make it 2 0. First card of the contest as well. Here's another look. 
Malik Stewart with the challenge certainly here. Just outside of the box. Luckily for him. Is it a penalty he's given it? Looked like he was just outside of the box. He did point to the spot. Certainly had not gotten inside yet. Yeah, Pipe Pipe given a penalty for out of Nemhard. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a big mistake there by referee Nemhard. That was at least five yards outside of the box. Tavin Leslie. to win it back. Another wasted opportunity. That's too many touches from Ramsey. That's took way too long. Had a lot of space and needed to move with more urgency. Stevenson. Stevenson tipped over the top. I should have didn't get a touch on it, did Kenton? But not a bad effort coming from the spot panel number eight.
Maybe just get one other shot since the two they had in the opening four or five minutes. Well, they'll get an opportunity here to strike towards goal. Malik Stewart John. We're also going to take a look back at the decision to award Irwin a penalty, which they converted, of course, to go up by two goals to nil. And whether the infringement came inside the box. Here's a look at it, Chris. Way outside the box. Wow. Far outside the box. It wasn't even close. It should have been the assistant who. Should have also given word to referee Nimhad based on positioning or where it actually happened, but the team of officials really making a mockery of that decision. Well, Erwin benefited. It was the same Stevenson. Sorry, Stewart. Same Malik Stewart who actually committed the infringement. Who is now getting treatment at number 12. There he is. He was a guilty party. Received a yellow card as well, Malik Stewart. But really and truly should have been a free kick outside of the area. And not a penalty. Oh well. Kevin Leslie wasn't complaining. He converted his fifth goal of the season. That he did. And the Irwin, two goals clear. So your goal difference now goes up to seven. To William Nib. Your goal difference, 13. So six goal differential there. Of course, those two teams will play their final game of the season, of the first round against each other. And the more goals Irwin can score here, the better their chance will be going into that last game of the opening round against the William Nib who will be a difficult opponent minute corner kick coming up well 69th minute corner kick coming up for Irwin Javon Perry taken down he was the man who had a couple of Shots early for the Spot Valley team. And they've been able to score those, or at least one of them could have been looking at a different game now. 
bunch of steam behind the Find two goals to nil. They can forge ahead here, though. Lewis. That was rather ambitious from Shamar Lewis. Was never in a position to have any serious shot at, tar at the target. Stevenson sent it inside. Still alive. And Irwin will clear. And once again, they'll have space. And numbers going forward. Another great opportunity coming up for Irwin. And appealing for a penalty this time. Nemar says get up. And they keep playing. Leslie shot going wide. This is that one now. Well, there was contact with the right boot. Didn't play the ball at all, for sure. I guess referee Nemha thought it was a bit soft. Maybe fairly so. Not a lot of contact in that. Yeah, minimal. Ramsey. Kit Mon as a second half substitute. Wrong to Ramsey. Has had an opportunity, has created an opportunity. Good ball floated inside. Ball put in. Let's see what happens here. Ah, off the hand. Or off the arm. Picked up the ball, floated in from Jay Walters. Campbell a little bit too complacent, bouncing up onto the arm. Again, a two goal lead, but quite a few opportunities squatted so far by Irwin. I'm sure the management staff must be thinking that. Those chances might come back to haunt him. Erwin attacking from the left. A long range effort. Not a bad one. Not a bad one at all. Coming from Ronaldo Hilton.
Walters. Ramsey. Corner kick. Coming up for Irwin. The goalkeeper caught it a spin there. Poor soul. Could have been a lot worse. One corner leads to another. Kenoi Morant with Irwin's fifth corner kick of the match. And it's back inside time for 3-0. And Leslie missed it. And well claimed by goalkeeper McFarlane. Carry for Wilson. Got Valley. With Anthony Francis. Erwin again on the front foot. Looking for Ramsey. of the contest for Roxroy Ramsey couldn't put it away lovely ball put into the box again Ramsey finding himself in space kept his eye on it must say but the option to use the instep probably not the best and maybe should have been looking for the wider surface area on the inside of his foot place that to place that into the far corner Ramsey scored once already this season and has had a couple of good opportunities to double his tally. Again, <laughs> not a missed opportunity for Irwin. Oh, they have had so many in this in these 77 minutes so far. Here they come again. Irwin. Now. Right. Christy clears. goals uh, so far in this contest. The first one coming up in the 16th minute. And the assist coming from Kevin Leslie. And a wonderful finish from Amara Robinson to make it 1-0. Just have a look at this strike. Gorgeous finish to put Irwin in front. And then in the 60th minute, Leslie with his fifth goal of the season. This one coming from the penalty spot to make it 2-0. A penalty that, in fairness, they never should have got because the infringement was committed outside the box. But referee Peralta Nimhart saw otherwise. 
And so it's 2 0 in favor of Irwin. And in order to cut the cup action, Tintin leads in Mary High by two goals to nil at half time. Receives, they continue to lead Green Island by two goals to one. How about him? <laughs> He's on the siege now. And Joseph McFarlane. But he keeps another one out. Well, Irwin heard the updates on the results and they were looking to change that 2 0 to 3. A cute angle McFarlane does well. Goes straight at him. Pep with the hand. Had he missed, there certainly would have been, I think, Leslie waiting on a tap in. Monroe and Lacovia still locked at one apiece. At full time in the Manning Cup, Clancarthy won, Papine nil. And Jonathan Grant won, Tivoli nil. That's a big result in the Manning Cup as well. In that zone. Tivoli coming into that match would have been in second position. Jonathan Grant in fourth. Three points for Jonathan Grant. Ten minutes to play in this one. Foot Valley. With a throw. Deep in enemy land. Stephenson will try his luck from distance. Produces a spectacular looking save from the goalkeeper. Good attempt by Spot Valley. The best we've seen from them in the second half. Did have a free kick earlier on. Which he kicked just over the bar. That was a much better attempt. Not afraid to strike it from distance. Travis Stephenson. Corner kick coming up now from Perry. Headed away. Ramsey checks it over the top. We'll have more space here, Ramsey. Ramsey throws it hard, trying to go across the face of goal. And this team will have a corner kick, will they? They should. I'm surprised I'm not seeing more urgency from this Irwin unit. Corner kick coming up. Ooh, towards goal! And it goes in for 3 0. It's Leo Campbell who pokes it home. Gets his third goal of the season. And Irwin are three clear against Port Valley. Important goals here as they push for a place in the second round. Good corner put in towards the near post. Should have been better handled by McFarlane. You would be disappointed with that. And because it got past him, it allowed an easy finish for Campbell, who was certainly paying attention at the back post. Three for the season for the Irwin number 10. And important goals coming in the back in the back end of this match. He has a jiggle and a dance to go with it as well. Carries their goal difference up to eight. So far in the season. 
William made like 13, so there's 5 between them. It does mean that 3 clear goals against William Nip will create a switch in positions. Yeah, I still don't see them beating William Nip by 3 clear goals, so I would suggest they try and score a few more here. Maybe that's why they've decided to make a change as well, bringing on centre forward Detroit Reed. They're number nine. Packing it with strikers, seeing if they can, if they can, as you said, make a bigger impact in terms of goals. Hasn't scored so far this season, Reed. Hard to score when you're coming on with six minutes to play. We've had many super subs that have scored more than one goal in six minutes. Suggesting he's a super sub. I was saying your coach was one. Or your former coach. <laughs> Let's focus on schoolboy football. <laughs> I understand the sore moment. Chris Bowles, a wide delivery that is left alone outside the off zone. And there is no run. It hasn't been a rough afternoon for Tavin Ledley, though, who added his fifth of the season. There he is, the number seven. He's been a standout player for Irwin. Very creative within the middle of the park. Has an assist as well in this game. Scored a penalty in the 60th minute. And also picked up this knock. Oh, well. Big unit he hit into there. So Let's look at the big unit going down. Yeah, that was Anthony Francis. Mm -hmm. Then Leslie still standing strong. <laughs> we will sure to see a few minutes added on. So, Mara Robinson off Abraham Quest, the number 13 on for Irwin. And the confirmation that Detroit Reed is on, Ronaldo Hilton substituted. Nicholas Heaven and the spot planner number two replacing Stevenson. Can Irwin get one more? Not from that play, they won't. And there is Heaven. Getting his few minutes of what he hopes will be glory. Apart from our second match of the day, St. James and Morgan. Some other big fixtures in the Costa Cup this afternoon. Manchester coming up against Belfield. Of course, there's a Monroe Lacovia that's going on. Steps come up against BB Cook. That should be very interesting. In the other zones. St. Thomas Tech. That will be a derby match in St. Thomas against Seaford. Of course, when you look at the overall position of the Zone A table, Chris, if William Nip are unable to avoid defeat against Irwin in their final game, then they would also have to consider Herbert Morrison, 
Liverpool can also join them on 15 points if they defeat St. James in their last game. Yeah, and at this stage, they have a plus seven goal difference. Herbert Morrison. So this will be a tremendous finish to Zone A in the Da Costa Cup. Still would favour Cornwall College and William Nip to get through. Yeah, I think William Nip certainly in poor position. And still would fancy their chances against an Irwin team. It would be easy. But as you said, yeah, on a final day fixture, you would rather see Malden from a Cornwall College perspective than, say, Irwin. Two minutes to be added. Ramsey is offside. Rockshire Ramsey gotten a couple of opportunities since coming on in the second half has created one as well and put any away though I think that would be one of the things for Norman Bigger Foster coach of the Irwin team would be the missed opportunities that his team has seen, and if they're even going to get a positive result against William Lee, that's something that they'll definitely have to improve. Because they won't, pro they won't, almost surely they won't get as many chances as they have seen here. So, certainly the conversion rate has to be better. Oh, here they come again. Another chance for four. Danger still lurks. Shamar Lewis now for Spot Valley. CJ Johnson, outside of missing an opportunity in the first half, hasn't had much work to do, but found himself in the right place on that occasion. We've gone past the two minutes of added time, so any moment now the final whistle will come as referee Broughton Nimhard has a look at his watch. And the final whistle comes in this Irwin Spot Valley encounter at the William Nib Memorial High School. Irwin came into this one needing to win, and they have done so. They get three goals and three points. And they are now within three of the group leaders, William Nib, Robinson, Leslie, and Campbell, the goal scorers. And they have gotten exactly what they came here to get. And now they set up a thrilling <coughs> final game in the zone with William Nib as they join. Herbert Morrison on 12 points. 3 0, the final score at the William Nib Memorial High School. Brilliant start for Spot Valley. Kevon Perry with the header off the crossbar. Could have given them an early lead. He would have a second opportunity as well. Perry gets this one on the left foot, striking it, coming off the left upright. And the goalkeeper, Jaquan Kenton. Cleaning things up. Those opportunities missed for Spot Valley and Irwin would make them pay. That was the warning. Well sailed by Joseph McFarlane. And then the opening goal coming in the 17th minute. Tapping Leslie. Thought about the shot before. Laying it up for Mara Robinson. And Robinson with a tremendous right footed finish to make it 1-0.
more than likely his best of the season. This shot would come shortly after for Scott Perry. But Jaquan Kenton, the 16-year-old, equal to the task. There were more opportunities in the first half for Irwin C.J. Johnson hitting high and wide. Leo Campbell with a lovely cross and Johnson really should have done better with that. Second half now. Leo Campbell getting into space. His shot heading towards space. The substitute. Roxroy Ramsey creating a chance for Tamin Leslie. Leslie's header well saved at point blank range. But they would keep pressing Irvin and they were fortunate to get this penalty because it was about five yards outside the 18 yard area. Girls and Nemhart pointed to the spot and they issued a yellow card. There's another look at it. It was Campbell that was taken down. And in the 60th minute, Leslie stepped up to power home. Straight down the middle. The goalkeeper getting down late. Leslie with his fifth goal of the season to make it 2-0. And that was another lovely opportunity for Roxware Ramsey. And it went wide. They kept creating the chances. And that one forced a save. One that you expected to make. Robinson with the shot. Stevenson, Khaled Stevenson, had a number of shots from distance for Scott Valley. And then the corner from Kenton. And Leo Campbell getting his third goal of the season, firing home. And there's no way he could have missed from that position. 3-0, the final score. Three points for Irwin. And they go within three of the group leaders, William Nib. Max statistics coming up. 19 shots taken by Irwin, nine of them on target, just five shots by Spock Valley, two of them on target, 19 falls in the contest, 12 of them are committed by the Irwin team, and Irwin having 61% of the possession to 39 for Spock Valley. Let's find out what the digital player of the match, Tamin Leslie, has to say. Tamin, your team coming out with a win here today. What do you think of your performance? Well, it was a great performance. I uh, just want to say thank you for the team effort from my teammates and good one from the coaching staff as well. And are you looking forward now to trying to advance in the next round? What do you think needs to be done personally uh, for the next game? Well, we have to come out in the next game and score as much as many goals as we can. And in order to go through the next round, we have to score about six, seven goals against the other opponent. All right, well, congratulations today and all the best for the rest of the season. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so now let's have a chat with the coach from Spartan Valley. Yeah, coach, uh, not the result you would have wanted today, but any positives to take from this game? Okay, all right. Let me just first congratulate Erwin on a well-played game. Well, um, as I say, we're trying to build for next season. Um, we started out very positively. If you realize, we got a few chances early. Um, we hit the post, I think, once, and there was another clear-cut chance that we missed. Um, as soon as Erwin settled in the game, they realized that they started to build a rhythm, and that once they got in the game and started scoring, then it was like downhill for us. Do you think you got an idea of how you need to set up your team uh, for the next season? Yes, most definitely. We This team has been around. They have been playing under 14. We have lost a few of them. Um, some boys um, have moved on. What we need to do now is look at what we have at school and see how we can build on those boys. All right, Coach Mahala today and all the best for us. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so and let's have a chat with the coach from Erin. Hi, Mr. Norman Foster. Coach, uh, you kept your hopes alive for the quarterfinals. What do you think about the team's performance today? Um, I think it was um, a 
kan jag på på samma gång. Ehm um, det kan ju som det you know get go vi startar där blir det så vi um, start bara kunna ehm um, putta sig liksom det är jag bort. You know the team keep our composure and you know step up to the game and we come out with a clean in the picture. We should not to do more but um that's how football go you know we just have to just rise up and try to put our foot forward again um on our last game to get all the goals that we need. Did the delay give you a chance to you know give the boy a fight the boys a final word on what they need to do? Pardon? Did the delay to the start of the game give you a chance to speak to the boys to let them know what they need to do? Well yes we I've spoken to them before the game so they know exactly what they should do. Um you know it's just up as i said uh, being prepared and get the boys them up and running and then to sit down and you know we have a slow start so you know i think that's resulted um in our performance a little bit but nevertheless you know we always keep our hopes high and you know looking forward to the next game and to see if we can come out um with a 6-0 victory hi right, coach thank you all right thank you Well, as you can see, Irwin High with all three points coming away with a 3-0 victory over Swat Valley, Robinson, Ledley and Kiambu, the scorers. Short while with match number two will be Memaldon High against St. James High School.